today's topic of discussion is dengue virus at the end of this session you should be able to enlist serotypes of dengue virus vector mode of transmission classification and clinical case definition especially of dengue virus describe pathogenesis and laboratory diagnosis of dengue virus dengue virus is an arbovirus arbovirus is defined as any virus that is transmitted through arthropods such as mosquitoes and ticks so it's from flaviviridae family it is single stranded rna and then you can see this is captured protein and there is an outer envelope so this is rna envelope virus and it has four serotypes 1 2 3 and 4 the most common epidemic vector of dengue in the world is aedes aegypti mosquito it can be identified by white bands or scale pattern on its legs and thorax the mode of transmission of dengue is by the infected female mosquito bite it's primarily a daytime feeder lives around human habitation and lays eggs and produces larvae preferentially in artificial containers what are the preferential sites of this aedes aegypti mosquito it breeds almost entirely in domestic man made water receptacles as you can see over here in this picture and it is also found in and around households construction sites factories unused tires flower pots coolers they are among the most common domestic breeding sites of aedes aegypti what is the pathogenesis of dengue virus the virus enters the body and invades the macrophages and also the dendritic cells so the virus replicates in these infected macrophages and activates cell mediated immunity infected local cells then migrate from site of infection to the lymph nodes where monocytes and macrophages are recruited and they become targets of infection consequently this infection is amplified and virus is disseminated through the lymphatic system viremia develops within 24 hours during this period virus travels throughout the body virus infected macrophages can also release a number of signaling proteins such as interferon cytokines chemokines tumor necrosis factor other mediators which are responsible for many symptoms this can affect hemostatic system of the body and can also infect bone marrow so that bone marrow cannot produce sufficient platelets the incubation period of this infection is 2 to 7 days dengue classification there are two types of main categories asymptomatic and symptomatic in case of symptomatic dengue viral infection the first sub category is undifferentiated fever in undifferentiated fever patient can experience fever with mild non specific symptoms that can mimic any of other acute febrile illnesses it will not meet case definition criteria for dengue fever the non specific presentation of symptoms make positive diagnosis difficult based on physical examination and routine tests alone however these patients would eventually recover without need for hospital care then is dengue fever it can be without hemorrhage or it can be with hemorrhage then is dengue hemorrhagic fever which can be without shock or it can be with shock then is expanded dengue syndrome it is an unusual manifestation it is isolated organopathy and this can result in for example liver failure or central nervous system dysfunction or probably encephalopathy etc let's discuss 
clinical case definitions. The first one is classical dengue fever or breakbone fever. The clinical case definition of this classical dengue fever is an acute febrile illness of two to seven days of duration with two or more of the following manifestations, such as headache, retroorbital pain, myalgias, probably rash, arthralgia. They can be mild hemorrhagic manifestation. Here you can see that this patient has rash. Dengue hemorrhagic fever. What is the clinical case definition for this dengue hemorrhagic fever? Please remember in case of dengue hemorrhagic fever, there are three phases, febrile phase, critical phase and convalescence phase. In case of dengue fever, there is febrile phase and just convalescence phase. Clinical presentation of dengue fever and the early phase of dengue hemorrhagic fever are quite similar and therefore you cannot differentiate between two forms early in the course of illness. With the close monitoring of key indicators, the development of dengue hemorrhagic fever can be detected at the time of defervescence so that early and appropriate therapy can be initiated. So what is the case definition? It is defined as fever or recent history of acute fever, hemorrhagic manifestation. Now it can be subtle minor epithelial hemorrhage in the form of petechiae often found on the lower extremities but may also occur on buccal mucosa, hard or soft palate. It can be subconjunctival, easy bruising on the skin or they can be hemorrhage such as epistaxis, gingival bleeding as you can see over here in this picture, gastrointestinal bleeding or they can be urogenital bleeding though it is rare. Okay, then is low platelet count. It is around 1 lakh or less than 1 lakh per cubic millimeter. And then is objective evidence of leaky capillaries. And this would manifest in the form of elevated hematocrit, which would be 20% or more over the baseline. There can be low albumin levels and probably there are pleural or other effusions. Clinical case definition of dengue shock syndrome. Four criteria for dengue hemorrhagic fever, which is fever or recent history of acute fever, hemorrhagic manifestations, low platelet count, and objective evidence of leaky capillaries. And along with that, there is evidence of circulatory failure. Now, in case of circulatory failure, it is manifested indirectly by all of the following rapid and weak pulse, narrow pulse pressure, cold clammy skin and altered mental status. Frank shock is direct evidence of circulatory failure. So what is a pulse pressure? It is the difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure and let's suppose if the resting blood pressure is 120 by 80, the pulse pressure is 40 millimeters of mercury. In case of narrow pulse pressure, it is less than or equals to 20 millimeters of mercury. Pathogenesis of dengue hemorrhagic shock syndrome. Second time dengue infection with another serotype of dengue virus can result in cross-reacting antibodies to the first serotype. Now there are two possibilities. Either the antibodies increase entry of virus into the macrophages and this can result in release of cytokines in huge amounts and there is shock and hemorrhage. Another explanation is that virus plus antibody immune complexes can activate the complement, it can increase vascular permeability and decrease platelets. Basically, Infection with one dengue serotype elicits immunity to that serotype, but it does not provide long-term cross-protection immunity to the remaining serotypes. And that is why the dengue infection is quite severe with the second serotype. 
Subsequent infection with a different serotype results in binding of new virus to cross-reactive non-neutralizing antibody from the previous infection and this can facilitate the uptake of uh, these viruses by mononuclear phagocytes enabling amplified viral replication. So this increases viral load and immunopathogenic cascade and resultant exaggerated cytokine response can lead to a transient increase in microvascular permeability as well. So that's the summary of this pathogenesis. Dengue virus laboratory diagnosis. Non-specific, they can be leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, elevated LFTs. Then specific includes viral isolation and serotype identification within one to five days of disease, either by mosquito and cell culture, or you can uh, also do PCR. Then genome detection, that is nucleic acid detection within one to five days of disease with the help of PCR. This is important and it is commonly done in labs, antigen detection. So the antigen NS1 detection can be done within one to six days of disease with the help of ELISA. And this NS1 is the non-structural protein. Then there are certain indirect methods. IgM serology is useful after six days. Then is IgG, which can also be performed with the help of ELISA and it is in paired sera. The first sample is taken uh, between one to five days of disease and the second one is taken after 15 days. So if you notice these direct methods they are more useful less than five days and these are more useful after five days or you can say um, on the sixth day and onwards the indirect methods are more useful. Summary the first confirmed outbreak of dengue hemorrhagic fever in Pakistan occurred in 1994 a dengue serotype 3 epidemic with dengue hemorrhagic fever was first reported in 2005. In 2008, there was expansion of dengue disease to large cities like KPK. In 2012, there was an outbreak in Lahore and other cities of Punjab. So dengue has four serotypes as I have mentioned before. Recovery from infection is believed to provide lifelong immunity against the serotype. However, cross immunity to other serotypes after recovery is only partial and temporary. Therefore, subsequent that is to say secondary infection by other serotypes increase the risk of developing severe dengue. And please remember the important difference between dengue and dengue hemorrhagic fever is that in case of dengue fever, there is no critical phase. Whereas in case of dengue hemorrhagic fever, there is a critical phase as well according to traditional WHO classification. Thank you.